Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. My name is Joe. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. If it's not your first time on the channel, what the fuck are you doing back here? This content is absolutely garbage. Of course we're here to jump on the bandwagon of hype like a good Yugi tuber should. We've seen Prank Kids stuff announced and of course Prank Kids is what you're here for. No doubt because you've seen that because you were never going to play this fucking deck ever again until you saw that, you cynical, cynical fuck. But in any case, you're here and you've clicked on this video and you've done exactly what I need you to do except for click subscribe. So if you haven't done that already, you most definitely should. But we're going to get stuck into this video momentarily. Before we do though, let me just give you an outline of what this is all about. The intention here is to give you a solid foundation to play the deck from the get-go. We're not going to teach you absolutely everything you need to know. I'm not going to have time for all kinds of tons and tons and tons of crazy combos and lines of play because things are going to shift between now and the release of that link one that everyone is so hyped about. However, we are going to have some sample deck lists at the end of this and there are plenty of other resources out there you can check. But the idea here is just to give you a solid foundation of which to build on either so that you can play the deck comfortably or play against the deck comfortably because most notably, as has been said by Dinka Boy, nobody knows how to play against prank kids and that's how he managed to win a fucking YCS with a goddamn deck. Don't ask me how, he's big brain, he's colossal cranium, whatever. In any case, I'm going to stop waffling, let's get stuck right in to the video for you. Prank Kids is an archetype which debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG at the end of 2018 in Hidden Summoners, a set which also included the far more hyped yet far less impressive Maya Kashi archetype, as well as support for Nepethys in the form of a full archetype of backing. Prank Kids is an archetype of monsters that span a variety of attributes and monster types, and these differences are quite obvious in their artwork too, which we'll get to later. The main deck monsters all also have corresponding fusion and link monsters. For example, Lampseas has Rocket Ride and Bow Wow Bark, although Roxies has just had its link monster announced to much hype in the form of Meow Meow, which will debut in Phantom Rage. We don't yet have a rock type fusion, so that may be something to inspect in the near future. The deck's theme is based around a bunch of fun looking monsters, almost funhouse style, and is a spin on Max Carl Planck's research into wavelengths. Prank also sounds pretty close to Planck too, so there's a little nod to it there. Prank Kids had some initial hype, but quickly died down. We did see it have a few good tournaments, but none better than a legendary victory at YCS Milan in 2018 at the hands of Ding Carboy, who took the tournament by storm, banking on its biggest advantage being, and I quote, many players don't know how to play against it. Something that more or less holds true even today, because despite a small spike in players over the following few events, it seems to have died off entirely. Hopefully we can fulfill this prophecy of people figuring it out later on, so you'll be well equipped to either pilot the deck or play against it. So how is Prank Kids played? Let's immediately equip ourselves so we don't fall into this proposed trap by car of not being prepared for this deck. We're going to briefly discuss exactly what this deck does well, and the strengths and weaknesses the deck faces overall. Both of these will help us as players of the deck and opposing it. The main thing to note is that the deck has an incredible ability to swarm the field. The monsters all share similar effects, being able to fetch more of their prank kid amigos out of the hand or deck when used for fusion or link summons, which keeps them rolling around and plucking resources out for you to continue to abuse and in turn cause your opponent a whole lot of arsake. The deck also has the inbuilt ability to regeki or feather dust to the opponent, something definitely not to be sniffed at. The aim usually being to control the state of the board until you can catch the opponent slipping and move in for the kill. There are some downsides however, most notably that the deck is very susceptible to interruptions. Cards like Call by the Grave and Hand Traps of most kinds can be devastating to the deck, and so the deck must be built with this in mind. It does also mean that there'll be some formats such as the current one which the deck can struggle in, but others where it can take advantage of decks playing fewer natural interrupts. 
For the next part, we're going to run the current known Prank Kids cards in terms of their archetype support. You're going to learn very quickly how absolutely ridiculous these names are, and it feels every bit as silly to discuss them as you'd imagine. I'll try to keep the effects accurate, but I will be wording them as always slightly glossed over. The cards will be shown on screen, so to mitigate any potential missteps in my wording, as well as so you can see any needed card text for clarification. But, given that you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player, we can freely assume that you won't be reading a fucking thing. We'll start off by discussing the monsters. Prankid Fanzies. If it's sent to the graveyard as a material for a fusion or link summon of a Prankid's monster, you can send a Prankid's card from your deck to the graveyard, then special summon a Prankid's monster from your hand or deck in defense position except for Fanzies. This effect is a hard once per turn. Following on from that, we have Prank Kids Dropsies. If it's sent to the graveyard as material for a fusion or link summon of a Prank Kids monster, you can gain a thousand life points. Then, you can special summon a Prank Kids monster from your hand or deck with a different name in defense position. This effect is a hard once per turn. We have Prank Kids Lampsies. If it's sent to the graveyard as material for a fusion or link summon of a Prank Kids monster, you can burn the opponent for 500, then summon a Prank Kids monster from the deck or hand with a different name in defense position. This effect is a hard once per turn. And lastly, for our main decked monsters, we have Prank Kids Roxies. If it's sent to the graveyard as a material for a fusion or link summon of a Prank Kids monster, you can banish one card from your hand and then draw one card. Then, you can special summon a Prank Kids monster from the deck or hand with a different name in defense position. This effect is a hard once per turn. Using three of each of these is usually pretty standard. Most of the support that is used outside of the deck involves largely being focused on the fusion support. It's also worth noting that the deck can often churn through all of the different names of these monsters very quickly, so maxing out on these is a sensible option. Next up, we'll be taking a look at the extra deck options. We have Prankids Weather Washer, and it's made using two Prankids monsters. Your opponent can't activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step when a Prank Kids monster attacks. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can tribute this card and then special summon two Prank Kids, non-fusion monsters with different names, from your graveyard. They can't be destroyed by battle this turn. This effect is a hard once per turn. We also have Prank Kids Rocket Ride. This also requires two Prank Kids monsters. If it's fusion summoned, it can lose 1000 attack this turn and then attack directly. You can tribute this card and then special summon two non fusion Prank Kids monsters from the graveyard with different names, but they can't attack this turn. You can only use each effect of Rocket once per turn. We have Prank Kids Battle Butler. It requires Lampsies, Dropsies, and Fansies to make. Must be fusion summoned. Quick effect you can tribute this card to blow up all your opponent's monsters. If this card is sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card, you can target one non-fusion monster in your graveyard and special summon it. This effect is a hard once per turn. Next, you have Prank Kids. It requires two Prank Kids monsters. If it's Link summoned, you can add a Prank Kids spell or trap from the deck to the hand. You can tribute it to add two non-Link Prank Kids cards with different names from your graveyard to your hand. Each effect is a hard once per turn. After that, we have Prank Kids Bow Wow Bark. This also requires two Prank Kids monsters. A Prank Kids monster this card points to gains a thousand attack. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can tribute this card, then add two Prank Kids cards with different names from your graveyard to your hand. Also, Prank Kids you control can't be destroyed by card effects this turn. This effect is a hard once per turn. We also have Prank Kids Rip Roaring Roaster. It requires two plus Prank Kids monsters. It must be Link summoned. Quick effect, you contribute it to blow up all the opponent's spells and traps. If this card in your possession is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card, you can target a non-Link card in the graveyard and then add it to the hand. This effect is a hard once per turn. And finally, we have the brand new announced card set to be released in Phantom Rage in the OCG later this year. The card which is getting everyone hyped about this deck once again. Prank Kids Meow Meow. Requires one level 4 or lower Prank Kids monster. 
You can only link summon prank kid meow meow or meow meows once per turn. If a prank kid's monster would tribute itself to activate its effect during the opponent's turn, you can banish this from the field or graveyard instead. This effect is a hard once per turn. It's not yet known how much Meow Meow will see play, but this has caused an absolute wave of interest, leading us to believe that it will see quite a bit of use. We see different numbers of each of the extra deck monsters being used depending on preference, but all of these do see some level of play in most builds. The options for in archetype spell and trap support for the deck is fairly limited, and we'll cover the options available for you next. We start off with Prank Kid's Place. When it's activated, you can add a Prank Kid's monster from the deck to the hand. Once per turn, if you fusion summon a Prank Kid's monster, except during the damage step, you can have all your monsters gain 500 attack, even if this leaves the field. Once per turn, if you link summon a Prank Kid's monster, except during the damage step, you can have all your opponent's monsters lose 500 attack, even if this leaves the field. You can only activate one copy of place per turn. We have Prank Kid's Pranks. You can discard a Prank Kids card to special summon a Prank Kids token. It can't be tributed. During your end phase, you can shuffle three Prank Kids cards from your graveyard into the deck and then draw one card. You can only use each effect of Pranks once per turn. We have Prank Kids Pandemonium. During the main phase, fusion summon a Prank Kids monster using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. For the rest of the turn, after this card resolves, you can't summon other than other Prank Kids monsters. And lastly, we have Prank Kid's Plan. During the main phase, you can, immediately after this resolves, link summon a Prank Kid's Link monster using Prank Kid's you control as material. When your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can banish this card from the graveyard, shuffle any number of Prank Kid's cards from your graveyard into the deck, and then that opponent's monster loses 100 attack for each shuffle card until the end of the turn. Each effect is a hard once per turn. It is quite common to see all spells being used as three ofs, but the trap usually only gets used as a single copy. Of course, this also varies depending on the build and personal preference. For the next part of the video, we're going to be taking a look at some external support you could consider for your build. I'm going to try and keep this section brief. I find that most of the external support used is self-explanatory. Staples, fusion support, and the like. We'll cover some sample cards that are quite often used to give you some ideas of options you could reasonably consider. Hand Traps This goes without saying, and the deck being largely pure for the most part does give some room to allow you to fit in a solid amount of reactive cards, something incredibly important in the current format. Fusion Support Whether it's abusing solid existing fusion spells such as Thunder Dragon Fusion, or Invocation, this deck is fantastic at abusing what fusion support is out there. It should come as no surprise then when we see many of these powerful options being tested in the deck. You could even go as far as to include cards like Cross Sheep or Predator Plant, Vert, Anaconda into this area, although these don't see quite as much play. Totally awesome. This card is one of the best extra deck options in the game and remains so even though you can only run a single copy at this time. Having access to such a strong XC monster can be incredibly impactful. Called by the Grave. This has begun to see quite a resurgence in the current format with the prevalence of hand traps. This deck can be very susceptible to these kind of interrupts, so giving yourself a card that works as a great defensive option for your plays, as well as a potential interrupt on the opponent's turn, seems like a sensible choice to consider. And lastly, we have the Invoked Engine. So this is a little bit of an odd one, but the tiny Invoke package fits incredibly well into this deck, and having a huge variety of targets for the summoning of these insane Invoked fusions seems like a very powerful option that could well be worth considering. And for this final part of the video, we're going to round off with a sample deck profile. Hopefully this will give you some ideas of something you can work off. It isn't tried and tested to the degree that you might hope. And of course, by the time Phantom Rage comes around, it will be outdated. But it will give you, hopefully, some ideas of options you could consider based on the current format and things that are released at this time.
So here we are at the end of the video. You are my favorite type of loser. You made it all the way to the end scene. Let's see if you can make it through the outro where you get to see this fucking ugly mug up because I'm personal. In any case, thank you very much for making it this far. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. It has been informative and you, uh, you'd like to stick around and see more of this kind of content. If this is the sort of thing you enjoy, we have plenty of it on the channel for you. If there's other stuff you'd like to see, definitely reach out, but do go ahead and check out the other videos we have available for you. I do a variety of content and mostly it's this kind of trash stuff as well, but I'm sure you'll enjoy it nonetheless if you've made it this far. But thanks again for checking in, guys. If you haven't already, you should most definitely hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.